What we're going to be going over here is variable overhead variance analysis and we're going to be doing it in terms of standard costing and we're going to be doing this uh, variance analysis here uh, looking at it in terms of a graph. We're going to be looking at our variances and we're going to lay them out on a graph. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, variance analysis, really we've got three different amounts that we have to deal with. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at it in terms of standard costing. So we're going to have to establish uh, some standard amount here. In this case, we're looking at variable overhead. So for our product that we're going to be looking at, we have to determine a standard amount of variable overhead that we're going to be using in this product. And then what we would do here, we'd have to know for the actual results or the actual amount that we'd be looking at for our variable overhead for a certain period that we'd be looking at. And then once we know the actual amount of our variable overhead that we have in the product, and our standard amount that we established here or our standard cost that we have, then we can determine the flexible amount. And based on our flexible amount here and our actual and our flexible amount, we'll have a variance between that. And then between our flexible and standard amount, we're going to be looking at variances there as well, as long as well as our the variance between our standard and our actual amount here. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, standard costing here and variance analysis, really what we're looking at is our actual results versus our standard cost. And our actual results is really our actual cost here. And our standard cost is based on some predetermined amount here, based on the standard that we establish. Okay, so let's look at, I got it laid out in the table form here. So uh, what we do here to determine our standard cost in this case for our variable overhead, that would be some standard quantity that we have of our over, variable overhead here times the standard price or standard unit price here for our variable overhead. So our standard quantity times standard price equals our standard cost. And then for our actual results that we'd have for the period, that would be some actual quantity of our variable overhead here times the actual price or the cost of that variable overhead. So the actual quantity times some actual price equals our actual, actual results. And then based on our actual results here and our standard cost or a standard that we established, we can determine our, in this case, the flexible amount or the flexible budget. And that's really taking the actual quantity here that we have for the period here that we'd be looking at and take that actual quantity times the standard price or the standard cost that we established here that would be so we take the actual quantity here from our actual results standard price from our standard cost we established that uh, that amount here would equal the flexible budgeted amount the actual quantity times the standard price equals our flexible bu flexible budget okay so let's go down and let's look at it in first in our table form here so what we're going to be looking at for our variances here for our variable overhead we're going to have a spending variance and an efficiency variance. I got everything color coded here. So for our spending variance, this is where we're going to be looking at our actual amount here versus what we have for our flexible budget or flexible amount. And if we look at it when we're talking about our cost here or over our amount here, it's going to be some actual hours here times some actual variable rate in this case. And we'd be doing the same here for our flexible and standard amount. It'd be some, some number of hours here, or variable hours sign some rate here. So looking at our spending variance here, uh, it's really between our actual and flexible amount. So we have uh, a, a common factor here between those two amounts and it's gonna be the actual hours used. So that's the common amount here between our actual and flexible amount. And then the variance is really our actual variable rate versus our standard variable rate because we can factor out the actual hours used. So our spending variance here act, uh, would be the, the difference between the actual variable rate here on a per unit basis and, be, and our standard variable rate. So the difference between actual variable rate and our standard variable rate that we've established, that difference times the actual hours used would be our spending variance. And then for our efficiency variance, that's simply the difference between our flexible and our standard amount. So the common factored amount that we have between those two, the shared amount here, or what's common between them is the standard variable rate here. So what we would do is we just factor that out. So that our variance is gonna be the dip between our actual hours used and our standard hours allowed or allocated here. So that difference, actual hours used, less our standard hours allowed, that difference times our standard variable rate 
is our efficiency variance. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at in graph form here. So I've got this graph laid out here where we're going to have our direct labor hours across the bottom here, across our x axis here, and then along our uh, side axis or y axis here, that's going to be our variable overhead cost. And then along with this graph, we're going to have this green line here. That's really a flexible budgeted amount. We're going to really be looking at two points on that. And that's really taking your standard variable rate that you've established times some direct labor hours here. And just to point out here, this our actual variable rate in this case for our variable overhead here and our standard variable rate for a variable overhead, those are based on direct labor hours in this case, just to make that point. Okay, so going back to our graph here. So really we've got two different points that we're going to be looking at here in terms of the direct labor hours. Those are going to be the standard hours that are allowed or allocated for for the product that we're looking at here. So what you would do, and, and, and you'd move that, look at it in terms of your green line here or your flexible budget at all. And you'd look, be determining a point here on that budget line here. That was the standard variable rate times some direct labor hours. In this case, direct labor hours here is going to be our standard hours allowed. And then the other point we have is this actual hours used here. We move that up to that point here. So those are the two uh, points that, are, that we're going to be really looking at here. And remember, this line here, it has a slope, and that's the standard variable rate on a per hour basis, the slope. So what we would do, just track it up here to standard hours allowed, hit your line here, and then you move it over to your essentially your y-axis here. And that is the standard variable rate times the standard hours allowed. And let's just go and let's lay this out on our graph here. So on our table here. So that's really coming off our standard amount here on our table, the standard that we established. Standard hours allowed times the standard variable rate. That's point here. All right, so we've defined our first point here for the standard hours allowed. That's the variable cost that we've established based on our standard. So now we'll go to the actual hours used. We move up the line here and then where it hits our line here, move it across to our y-axis, that's the standard variable rate times the actual hours used. So that's the cost here in terms of, in this case, it's going to be our flexible amount. So let's just go up and look at it. Here on our table, that's the actual hours used times the standard variable rate. That's our flexible amount. Okay, so we got that point. Then, okay, so we've got those two points established, but we've got one other point to be concerned with. That is the actual cost here. And in this case, you're going to find out that the actual variable rate here for our, our variable overhead is different from our standard variable rate. It is above our line here in the case of the actual hours used here, based on the actual hours used. It's above the line. So our actual variable rate is greater than our standard variable rate. So in this case, we have to point get that point here based on the actual hours used, move it across here, and you're going to come up with the, cost, the variable overhead cost here is based on the actual variable rate times the actual hours used. And if we go back to our chart here, you're going to see that's the actual cost or actual results for the period. Okay, so we've got those three points we have defined. All right, so let's first, our first look at our total variance here. And that's going to be the difference between our actual variable rate times the actual hours used here at that point and our standard variable rate times the standard hours allowed based on our standard. So you can go back up to our table here and you're going to see that right here. The actual amount here versus the standard amount. Okay, so that's how it relates to on our graph. So the other two points that we have to be concerned about is let's just look at this efficiency variance here. And that's really the difference between our standard variable rate times the actual hours used and our standard variable rate times the standard hours allowed. That difference between those points there. And you can see that's the difference between the, the standard hours allowed and our actual hours used here. So uh, we call it an efficiency variance because that is based on our, our, quanti our hourly quantity, our number of hours here, not a rate, but on our hours. And you can see that up here. That's our efficiency variance here on our graph. See it right up there. All right, so that's our efficiency variance laid out on the graph. The other thing is our variable overhead spending variance. And that's really going to be the difference here between the ac actual variable rate and the standard variable rate. 
that we have here based on the actual hours used. So that difference here is our uh, spending variance. And you can look at it in these terms. It's a standard variable rate, uh, a difference between the standard variable rate and the actual hours used here and our actual variable rate in the actual hours used. And you can go up here, see that on our graph here. The actual hours used here was the common factor between our flexible and our actual amount. So that's our spending variances. We can relate it to up in a graph, up on our chart here that we calculated. So you see, we got our spending variance. And our spending variance here was based on our price or our rate here. And our efficiency variance was based on our quantity here. All right, so that's how you'd lay it out on the graph here. And the other thing we want to point out here, we got, let's look at it. This, based on our standard hours allowed, anything less, if had we spent any, uh, spent our, our, the hours, the actual hours we used, had they been less than the standard hours allowed here, we would have a favorable variance because you'd have moved up to the line here. Favorable, our variable overhead cost would have been less in that case, less than the standard hours allowed here times their standard variable rate. Now, anything on the other side of the standard hours allowed here is an unfavorable amount here. And you can see that. In this case, we actual hours used were uh, uh, greater than the standard hours allowed, so it's unfavorable. And you can see it moving across here because we it cost us more money here. More it, The variable overhead cost was greater based on the actual hours used. So that's how that works. Okay, so this is this is how you're working it off the graph here based on our variance calculations that we did above here. But just to point out here, when you're talked about the efficiency variance here for a variable overhead, that was based on those difference in quantities because it the only th it, we use the same same standard variable rate here based on our costing line here. The only difference was the difference between the hours that we, direct labor hours that we used here. And direct labor hours was our base amount here for the standard variable rate here. That was based on that. And then our spending variance, as you can see here, that was the difference between our a standard variable rate here versus our actual variable rate. Okay, so that's pretty much how this these spending and efficiency variances work when you're talking about variable overhead here. And uh, the graph here is a kind of a nice thing to look at and to understand it here based on laying it out here based on your direct labor hours that you have uh, either allocated or used. Then you establish your uh, stand or your flexible budgeted line here or your standard amount based, uh, based on your standard variable rate. And then you can see where you intersect here. You can go over and you can determine your costs, see if, you're over, if you have a favorable uh, cost or an unfa either unfavorable or favorable variance. And then you can also look at it in terms of the price, at, the price of your variable overhead here or the actual rate of the variable overhead, which was the spending variance in this case. Okay, so that'll end our discussion here with variable overhead, looking at standard costing laid out on a graph.